There you have it, said Edward's driver as he flicked through a railway magazine. A steam gala abroad with engines from all over Europe attending. Oh, I wish I could have gone, Edward sighed. Those visiting engines always have interesting stories to tell about where they've been and what they've done. Oh, never mind that. You're needed here. More than you think for that matter. Yeah, mind you, I'm probably too old now to do much travelling these days. The fat controller would never allow it. Trevor and Terence were busy at the vicarage orchard, felling old trees and planting new ones. Trevor was worried about Edward. Confided his concerns to Boko when he came home from the works. He seems terribly down in the dumps recently. He keeps going on about a locomotive gala he's missed out on. But that's not like Edward. He's usually quite content and satisfied with his lot. He'll come around soon enough. You wait and see. Weather changed awfully over the next few days. Rain bucketed down to the extent that rivers were fit for bursting their banks. Edward was ready to leave Brendan with his return train. But he was dreading setting out into the countryside. You've managed bad weather before and won, his driver encouraged, even with no side rods. Edward smiled and ran gently out into the open. But the storm grew gradually worse, as the wind began to pick up in very strong gusts. Trevor's orchard was seeing the worst of the weather, and one of the trees was ready for collapsing. Terence the tractor was also helping to try and keep things under control. But there was nothing he could do, besides holding the tree back for a while with a very strong chain. Trevor! he called. There's not going to be much more I can do! What'll I do then? You'll need to warn Edward and Boko. Boko will be at Wellsworth. If you hurry now, you'll catch him before he leaves for the China Clay Works. Right, said Trevor, and sped off to warn Boko. Boko had just arrived with a supply of new trees when Trevor rushed in. Boko, there's a tree at the orchard ready to fall. We need your help. Head to the orchard, Trevor. I'll be up as soon as I can with a crane. Boko was as good as his word, and arrived just in time to secure the tree. Right, he said. I'm sure I've always been warned, and we've got time to get this thing shifted again. Oh, no such luck, the vicar called. Edwards passed the last signal five minutes ago. He'll be here soon. Terence's grip on the tree suddenly gave way, and the chain between them snapped. Ooh! He squeaked as he shot backwards. What now? That crane can't hold it for long in this wind. He can try, though, said Boko, at least until Edwards pass through. They could hear Edwards whistle coming toward them. Oh no, groaned Boko. Please hold, please! Edward could see the tree in front of him, and he could see that it was about ready to fall. It's no use trying to stop, thought the driver. We'd be crushed if we did. The rails are too wet. I'll just need to keep going, said Edward bravely, and sped on ahead. Come on, Edward! whistled Trevor and Terence together. Yes, Edward, agreed Boko. You can do it!
Well done, Edward, they called. You did it! The tree lay sprawled across the line. But Edward wasn't concerned. He had got everyone through safely, and that's all that mattered. That evening, when the storm had died down and the tree had been lifted, the Fat Controller gathered Edward, Boko, Terence and Trevor together at Bryn. I'm very proud of you all. You all showed great courage and perseverance in the face of a dangerous situation. Edward, Trevor and Boko, as a reward you're all getting a new coat of paint each. And Terence? You are going to be mended free of charge at my works after your impromptu reverse. Darren smiled. Oh, thank you, sir. My owner will appreciate it. Bill and Ben had been shunting in the yard and puffed over. We heard about the tree in the orchard, said Bill. Aren't the little birds all right? They're fine, smiled Trevor. Their tree wasn't the one involved in the accident. Edward smiled. You know, it's funny how these things work out, really. Today really made me appreciate what I do have here. My friends. If it weren't for you, I would have hit that tree head on. It would have proved very nasty. So no more talk of leaving us then, chuckled Boko. Not for a long time. If ever, smiled Edward. In my opinion, there's nowhere else on earth that even comes close to living on the island of Sodor with my friends. <laughs> <laughs>